Hello. Hopefully everyone can hear me. Welcome. It's great to see so many folks I know and, and, and so many folks I don't know, even more importantly. But I, uh, I hope I get to, to know you at some point. So thank you so much for taking the time today on a Saturday morning um, to jump on a Zoom call. And uh, I'm Christina Zahorek. I'm the president of the Illinois Democratic County Chairs Association. And I am the, uh, I get to be blessed with being the chair of the McHenry County uh, Democratic Party. So again, thank you everyone for being here this morning. And you're here because you are the key to us being successful throughout the state uh, in November. Um, you have at some point signed up to join with us in the REV project that we launched. We actually started it about um, under a slightly different name uh, last summer in McHenry and we expanded it throughout the state. And REV, as you all know, stands for Recruit, Engage, and Vote. And what we found and discovered is that in our communities, often we don't know exactly who all of our Democrats are. It's because maybe they're not voting consistently, or they haven't been talked to, or just generally asked. And we know through a Vote Builder, which is the database that the Democratic Party of Illinois um, hosts, that we are able to score, based on a variety of criteria, whether or not someone lands on our side of the aisle based on their value system, right? And uh, what we've been doing is we initially have been reaching out to voters to say, you know, you, we believe that you share our democratic values. We want to talk to you about the things that you are concerned about and bring you in and identify with the party. That got somewhat truncated because of this pandemic. But we here at the IDCCA felt that this was such an important program that we shifted it to virtual. So as, a, as opposed to door-to-door -door grassroots campaigning, we started phone banking. And the phase one project of the REV uh, program was kind of a wellness check as well as an identifying um, um, exercise as well, where we targeted into precincts. Um, not only volunteers came to help us, but precinct committee people came as well and reached out into their communities to start to identify and also check on our, our Democrats to know that if they needed something and they needed help, that we were here to kind of direct them into the right direction. We then shifted that program to a uh, program where we are looking for those Democrats in our community who do not consistently vote, that we call them sometimes our drop-off Democrats. And we also know that in this election cycle, there is a bucket of voters that is being targeted by the changes in the election code. And those are voters who voted in the last three election cycles and are new voters in 2020. And that bucket of voters is being targeted already with a direct application from their election authority to apply to vote by mail. In addition, there's a layering effort that's going to be going on with this bucket of voters. Um, there's uh, an addition, there's the Secretary of State will be reaching out to them, Vote Yes for Fairness will be reaching out to them, organizations are reaching out to them, as well as candidates. So here at the IDCCA, we felt it was really important to target this other group of voters who are not going to be targeted by any of this other effort. And those, again, are voters that we know are in our community. And that if we just give them a little bit of a nudge, that they will pull the trigger and go and vote, uh, either vote by mail or because of great democratic leadership, we have four different ways to vote in the state of Illinois. 40 days prior to the election, you can vote early, starting September 24th, which is just a few weeks away. Uh, you can early satellite vote starting October 19th, meaning that you can go to various designated places within your community to go vote. You can vote on election day, November 3rd, or you can also vote by mail. So we feel that it's very important to reach out to these voters that no one else is going to be talking to unless you're talking to them. In my own county in McHenry, we've got about just over 3,000 folks um, to contact in that bucket. We've already made a number of, of outreaches and phone calls. And I know from Jillian Hawkins, our assistant executive director, who's kind of running this program, that we have 30 folks already 
from our phone calls who have applied to vote by mail, who would not have been reached or contacted in any other way other than this program. And what we also know from research is if folks who share our values actually get and apply for a vote by mail ballot, once they get that ballot starting September 24th mailed out to them, they will vote. So that is super important. And we cannot do this unless you're engaged in this program. And we brought on today our uh, Illinois treasurer, Michael Ferrix, to come and talk a little bit, not only about this program, but also from his perspective, running um, for office. Many of you know him as the standing tall for Illinois candidate. Uh, and uh, uh, that's just because, you know, he's just a little bit taller than some of us. Uh, <laughs> I say that somewhat funny. I wish he were standing. If he were standing, then we wouldn't be able to see, see you at all. Um, but Mike uh, was raised um, in a smaller community in Gifford, Illinois. His father is a teamster, teamster truck driver, and his mother was a university secretary of AFSCME. I think these are important things to know about him. He also served in the Illinois legislature. He was a state senator prior to becoming our treasurer. And he uh, has done, I think, a lot of some really positive things for the state of Illinois. And I actually would also like you to talk a little bit about that because I think it makes a difference when we elect Democrats and Democratic candidates who actually do their job and serve the people of Illinois. So uh, without further ado, Mike, uh, take it away. Christina, thank you very much. Uh, thank you all for joining us here today. Yes, I'm the candidate who stands tall for Illinois, but I'm doing it from sitting in front of a computer today. And I wanna thank you all for spending time with us at 11 o'clock on a Saturday morning in front of a Zoom meeting. I don't know how many Zoom meetings you are all participating in. Uh, I've lost track. Um, the idea of sitting in front of a Zoom uh, Saturday morning was probably the last thing that I had in mind until Dan and Christina told me what this was about. And I happily signed up to do this because this is so important. And you will hear this a lot between now and the election, and you have heard it if you've been involved in campaigns in the past, that this is the most important election in our history. And I've said it in the past, and it doesn't keep getting worse, but this year it has gotten worse, and this year I really mean it. Our democracy is under attack. Our institutions, whether it be basic freedoms of speech or the press, our institutions like the Postal Service are under attack by this guy who was using the power of the office to enrich himself and his family and to rig the election in his favor. And if we are able to stop him, it seems pretty clear he's setting this up to deny a peaceful transfer of power. So what do we do about this? It is very easy to get frustrated. I can tell you that. I, I felt this, this range of emotions. I remember a time just under four years ago when I found out Donald Trump was elected that I crawled into bed and did not want to get out. I mean, really, it probably took a week before I really started to recover. And I was able to do that. It's something I tell people all the time. So we make a choice every day whether we're going to be happy or we're going to be miserable. We make that choice when we wake up in the morning and we ask ourselves, do I want to focus on all the bad things that are happening out there that I have no control over? And if you do that, this president gives you all kinds of things to focus on. I mean, it seems like every day there is a new scandal, a new outrage, that should have taken down any other president. But this avalanche, this cascade of scandals has really numbed a lot of people to how far down he has drugged the office of the presidency. We can't lose sight of that. But we also can't sit mired in our misery thinking it's completely outside of our control. I tell people, you can make a choice to be happy in the day, every day. You just have to choose to get up out of bed and focus on something that you can control. If you get up and decide, I want to bring five more voters out for Joe Biden and Kamala Harris, you can do that. I know you can. It's not a goal that's that bad. And if you focus on the progress you're making, if you want to focus on being kind to your neighbors, this is a really simple thing. 
Just, yes, I saw Christina's sign. That's remind me. Thank you. If you want to help bring back kindness, you can do that in your neighborhood. You can do that in your interactions with people. And start to remind people that's how Americans are supposed to act with each other and not follow the example of this president. But I can tell you every day you're going to go to bed saying, I've done my part to make this world a little better. And that's what the Democratic chairmen are trying to do here today. To help make it easier to give you concrete examples of things you can do to help make America better. And I know this can work. I know this can work because I'm living proof. I would like to think that I'm elected state treasurer in the state of Illinois because of my charm and my personality and my wit. However, I know that most people who went to vote in 2014 didn't know either of the two candidates for treasurer. You know, we spent a lot of money, but there are a lot of voters out there who just don't follow these down ballot races. Now, there are a lot of people who are going to be excited to vote for Joe Biden, to vote against Donald Trump, but there are a lot of good candidates down the line. And it's organizations like the County Chairman's Association, like the Democratic Party, that are helping to get people out. And if you doubt you can make a difference, I see several new faces here who I who have not talked to before. I won my race for Illinois treasurer in the third closest statewide election in Illinois history. I won by 9,255 votes or something close to that. Now, a lot of you out there, uh, Christina and Dan don't get to answer this, but I, I wonder if you know how many precincts there are in the state of Illinois. I'm not going to wait because I know Dan muted you, but the answer is just over 10,000 precincts. And that means I won my race by less than one vote per precinct. But that means in an election like this, every single one of you can find one person in your precinct who was not going to vote. You might even be able to find one person who was going to vote the wrong way and vote for Donald Trump and convince them to do the right thing to save our country. Because this isn't really a fight the Democrats and Republicans traditionally fight over tax rates, over some social issues. This is a fight for what makes America great. Our freedoms, our Bill of Rights, our institutions that are under attack. And you can convince Republicans, because I've seen Republicans out there who have said, enough is enough, I'm going to speak out against this. I love my country enough not to turn over the keys to their four years of Donald Trump. And so what is a way or a thing you can do? You can make sure that people vote. We are living through a pandemic. And quite frankly, the thought of going standing in line and going to a public building with a lot of the people scares folks. But fortunately, we have vote by mail in Illinois. And we need to make sure people know this because you all on this call do, but there are an awful lot of people who are confused about this. And I know the best way to reach them is through an individual contact. Now, we have an organization that is sending out mail to people's homes. Think of this like the Air Force. They're going out and providing cover, but most people still need an individual contact. We're still humans, we like that contact, and when we hear a neighbor, when we hear a live voice from someone on the other end explain this to us, we're much more likely to be spurred to action. And I hope that's what you will all do. And I will say one other thing, if you think that this doesn't make a difference, you know that 9,255 vote landslide that I had in 2014? On election night, I was losing by about 20,000 votes. And believe me, I don't like to lose. It was tough. My daughter uh, asked me, Daddy, why did we lose? And my answer to her was, Ella, we didn't lose. In life, we either win or we learn. And we're going to learn from this. But let me show you the lesson I learned. When people ask me, are you ready to concede to your opponent? I said, no. I'm a Democrat. As a Democrat, I believe in democracy. And I believe that the votes should be counted. I believe that if someone takes the time and the effort to go cast a vote, we ought to count it and let their voice be heard. So the day after the election, when I was still, by some counts, down about 14,000 votes, we sent a lot of people like you, activists who wanted to make a difference. We sent them to election authorities. 
to make sure the votes were counted. And this may surprise you. Do you want to guess who we found there? We found people paid by Bruce Rauner looking to fight those votes, looking to deny people their right to have their vote counted. And we engaged in a fight, and it was a righteous fight. And over the course of two weeks, we made sure that people who took the time to mail in their ballots, those votes were counted. At the end of that two-week period, I went from losing by about 14,000 votes to winning by just over 9,000 votes. That's because organizations like the Democratic County's Chairman's Association, the Democratic Party, made efforts to get people voting early by mail. That was six years ago. We've come a long way. We've made it easier. It should be easier for us to log those votes early and ensure Democratic successes. I'm going to guess that many of you are on this call because you want to help elect Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. And you look forward to that day when you can say goodbye to Donald Trump. But I will tell you, there are a lot of other good candidates on the ballot. But yes, you may not even know about, but I know. In fact, they're running as Democrats. They share a lot of the same values I do. And I'll also tell you, there is a constitutional amendment on the ballot here in Illinois to pass a fair tax, which for the first time will allow the General Assembly and the governor to charge higher rates on those who have done better in this economy. We've all seen what has happened. When Donald Trump talks about how well the economy is going, he looks at the stock market. And only about half of Americans are invested in the stock market. And much of that wealth is held by 1% of the public out there. When he talks about how well the economy is doing, what he means is how well it's doing for his friends. You don't have to look very far to see people who worked in hotels and restaurants who are laid off or were laid off. You don't have to look very far to find people working in grocery stores who are, you know, they're working, but under dangerous conditions. Our people, the people we care about, will benefit from a fair tax. And those people that Donald Trump has taken care of and have done phenomenally well, I don't fault them that, they are going to also help out more because they have been helped out by the system. So you're gonna have that on the ballot. And so hopefully you're all joining this. I don't have to tell you why it's so important. We all know at the federal level how important it is, but some people are gonna tell you, Donald Trump's gonna win Illinois. It, it doesn't really matter what you do. I'm gonna tell you there are an awful lot of Democratic candidates on the ballot that will make a difference. And Christine asked me to talk a little about my office. I can tell you that I love this job. This is, this is not the job I ran for. And that surprises some people. Didn't you run for treasurer? I said, yeah, I ran for treasurer, but the office I ran for is fundamentally different today than before I took office. And it's different today than it would have been if the Republican opponent had won. Because see, when I came into office, I realized there's a retirement crisis out there. You know, if you're, if you're one of that 1% is very wealthy, you don't have to worry about your retirement. If you're like most Americans, you're scared. Do I have enough out there? Will Social Security be enough? Will Social Security be around for me? My pension, will it still be around? Because a lot of uh, private sector pensions are under attack, and so are public sector pensions as well. We set up a new retirement savings program called Illinois Secure Choice to make sure that more Americans are able to enjoy their golden years. And I can tell you, this would not have happened if Democrats hadn't gotten out and voted for Mike Ferris. We also set up another savings program for people with disabilities. It's called ABLE. It's gonna make a big difference in their lives. People who have been forced to live in poverty because of their disabilities and because of federal laws, we set up something that's gonna allow their parents to save and give them a better future. And I will guarantee you that would not have happened under a Republican treasurer if Democrats hadn't gotten out and voted and voted early by mail. We have changed the way that we market our college savings plans. Because when I came into office, what I found is we were targeting those people who had done really well under the economy, those people who looked an awful lot like me. What we decided to do is to make sure that everyone has an access, has access to higher education. And we changed our marketing to make sure that more lower income families and families that traditionally not gone to college were being targeted, marketed, and we were helping them 
with our kids on a pathway to success. I can tell you my Republican predecessor had no interest in that. I could go on and on about changes we have made in this office. I could go on all day about changes my Democratic colleagues have made in Springfield, at county government, all over this state. But we don't have time for that. And other voters don't have time for that. You can't tell every story. But you can get out right now and tell the story of how easy it is to vote by mail, how important it is that you vote by mail. Now, some people are going to hear that this president is attacking the United States postal system. And they're going to be worried if, if the vote would count. And that's why it is so important that we get on this today. We cannot wait to the last minute. They're going to be like Lucy pulling that football away from Charlie Brown if we wait till the last minute. We have a chance to do something today to log those votes so that we can get this orange Cheeto out of office and that we can elect good Democrats up and down the ballot that will make a difference, who will use their office to help out people that we care about. And I say people we care about because by showing up at 11 a.m. at a Zoom call, you've demonstrated that you're one of those people who cares. I'm gonna ask you to take some time to reach out to your friends because we are in the fight of our life. This is the most important election of my lifetime, and I would say the most important election of this century. Well, thank you for coming out here today. Thank you, Democratic Carry Chairman's Association for doing this. Uh, we are gonna work today, we are gonna work tomorrow, we are gonna celebrate our national convention this week, and then we are going to finish by working throughout November 3rd. Thank you all for being part of it. Thank you, Mike. Um, I'm, I mean, you know, just hearing you uh, speak has um, re-energized me and what uh, I'm doing um, here with the County Chairs Association and also in my own county. So thank you for taking the time. Thank you to Ella for allowing you uh, to come on and join us today, uh, Treasurer Ferrix. I mean, this is, again, this is what we're doing allows us to elect Democrats like Treasurer Frerichs, who does the job that's needed to make a positive difference in everyday people's lives here in Illinois. And that's literally the link, right? The fact that we are driving out that vote. This election, while yes, it is the most important election for saving our democracy, small d, and saving America in a real way, what we are doing is making sure, again, that every little step that we can take will elect people and elect candidates like Treasurer Frerix who are going to have positive impact, not only at the top of the ticket, but all the way down. And, and again, it's so important because this, this election is going to be based on turnout, which I think, again, we've probably heard that in other elections, but it means so much more now. We need to have so many people turn out so that this is a mandate that says that the last four years are not what America really is about, right? And the only way that we do that and to beat back that fear is to make sure that we're getting the, the voters, that the Democratic leaning voters that you are calling today, tomorrow, through September 24th, are the people that are gonna make that margin of difference for so many of our local candidates. So thank you for doing all of that. I'm gonna turn this over now to uh, Dan Kovats, who's the executive director for the Illinois Democratic County Chairs Association to give you some more in-depth details about the program. And again, thank you, Mike, for taking the time today. Thank you, Stan. Thank you, President Zahorek. And I, I wanna get into the weeds a little bit on exactly who we're calling and why it's important and, and what the, the Chairs Association is doing to make it really easy for you to get involved. Uh, so we looked at what other you know, outside groups are doing with vote by mail and what with the election code, uh, what was passed and the people who are going to be contacted and discovered there's a wide you know, range of folks throughout Illinois, about a quarter of a million voters who right now nobody is talking to. These are voters who had voted in 2012, 2014 or 2016, but haven't voted since. And for one reason or another, there was no plans to contact them. So we, just, we stepped up as a county party organization and said, you know what, we're gonna take the lead. We're gonna get a hold of these folks. 
and that's where we need your help. These are likely Democrats. As President Sohorik mentioned, we're basing it off of uh, a scoring model in Vote Builder uh, of about a 60% and higher. So they are you know, lean to likely Democratic voters. So it's an easy conversation with them. Uh, and we're gonna be calling them and asking them uh, if they'd be interested in voting by mail. And if they are interested, are they interested in voting? Would they like an application sent to them? Or a, would they like to apply online? Now, what we do with the association is really make it kind of turnkey for all of our volunteers. A lot of people out there know what Vote Builder is, maybe have gotten in and looked around, done a quick look up, but don't really know how to get into the actual nuts and bolts with the organization. That's fine. Uh, with you know our assistant executive director, Jillian Hawkins and myself, we've got you know years of campaign experience and we've done all the legwork for you. So we've put together virtual phone banks of these likely voters. So all we need for you is, I put the, the link to the, the sign-up sheet on, in the chat. If you sign up to vote or to participate, we're gonna send you a link for that virtual phone bank. All you would need to do is click on that link and you're ready to go. Along with that, we're gonna send you a copy of the script. Some people like to have that printed out so that they can follow along. But if not, that script is already, will pop up on your computer screen. We're gonna send you a list of different resources because we're still, uh, due to the Trump administration failures, we're still knee deep in everything with COVID-19. So you might get people that are gonna ask like, hey, I can't get my prescriptions this month. You know, who can I contact? Or I'm having issues with groceries. Who do I contact? So we're gonna give you a list of resources in case the conversation kind of goes down that road. And then we're gonna be able to uh, give you in, any information to make it easy for you to reference back. So if there's questions about different candidates, if there's questions about fair tax, you're able then to transition that voter back to usable information for them. Now, what we know so far is we've been running this second round of, um, uh, of the REV project for a couple of weeks, and we're already seeing uh, a huge uh, influx of people who are wanting to get involved and, and make calls, especially in Champaign County, Northfield Township up in Cook County, uh, McHenry County, and Stevenson County. But we have a wide range of counties that are targeted areas where we need your help. So without getting too far into it, uh, please, we need you to, uh, to click on the link, sign up, and we will, within the next day or so, make sure that we get a, a link and those resources out to you so that you can make sure that you're calling through the next couple of months to help us. Again, we're looking at about a quarter of a million votes uh, of voters. So in the grand scheme of things within the state, that's not a lot. But as many of us who've been involved in politics and know, and, and Treasurer Ferrick spoke about his election in 14, some of these races, especially down ballot, are going to come down to you know single digit votes. You know we don't want to be on the wrong side of this if we lose by one vote. And some of us have been there on campaigns and have done that. We need to be reaching these people who nobody is talking to right now to get them to vote by mail. So I hope that you'll sign up, uh, and, and I hope that we can count on you uh, to help with vote by mail and our Rev project for the rest of the year. With that, I'll, I'll turn it back to President Zohorek. Thank you, Dan. Um, and, and again, you know, it's, it's I, I, so much of the other side is pushing people um, based on fear, fear task, tactics, whether it's, you know, fear of, of, you know, immigrants, fear of the pandemic, fear of, you know, the you know, truth and uh, lies, you know, coming out of the, the press or whatever the case may be. So, you know, one of the things that we're making sure um, not only with the REV project, but the county organizations are also making sure that these, this election has validity here in, in Illinois, right? So the county organizations uh, appointed and had commissioned throughout the state in the month of July election judges. That's the responsibility of the county organizations to make sure that we have our Democratic election judges in the room, in the polling places, when you go vote not only in the precincts, but also in the early election satellite spaces. The other thing is, again, is that um, in the changes to the election code that were recently passed 
by the Democrats and signed by Governor J.B. Pritzker is it allows us to have election, Democratic election judges in the room when they process the vote by mail ballots in every single election authority. And again, that is really important because it provides that check and balance. The other part, um, the other end of it is that we as an organization also do a lot of recruitment for poll watchers. And these are people that are, you know, Democrats that are trained, that are in the space, in the, in the polling places, and um, at the election authorities, authorities with eyes in the room. And this is also so important because it allows us then to say that this was a, a fair election, that we can have faith in the process, right? And um, again, even though we are a democratic state or we're seen as a democratic state, that's not necessarily true in every part of, of our state, right? And uh, we want to be prepared for any pushback that's coming from the other side. We know that they've already sent out a, um, you know, a, a, a plan to have aggressive uh, folks in those polling places. They're recruiting for it. Now, I can't say exactly that they're doing that here in the state of Illinois, but we've seen it elsewhere um, in the country. So at least where we can control in Illinois, we will make sure that we're doing all we can with the volunteers like yourselves who are making these phone calls. Many of you are already making them, so thank you. Um, I know also I can see on some of this call that we've got some election judges as well, so thank you for that. And I also know that we've got some folks on the call who signed up to be poll watchers. So thank you for all you're doing. You stepping up is what is gonna make a difference in this election cycle and making sure that we elect Democrats who are going to do the right thing and believe in good government and believe in helping everyday people. So thank you for all of that. Um, if you have any questions whatsoever about the process, you can reach out to myself, you can reach out to Dan Kovats, you can reach out to Jillian Hawkins. And I'm going to put Mike's number in so you can also reach out to him. I'm just joking. <laughs> just joking. Although he is one of the few, I think, statewide electeds who does take the time to pick up the phone when anyone has a question or a concern or a problem. So thank you again for all the service that you do for the state of Illinois. Um, that being said, I don't have anything else to add. Uh, Dan, I don't know if you did to have anything else to add. We're all good to go. Everyone's ready, right? They're engaged. We're set, we're fired up. We're gonna kick this guy out of the White House just like we kicked Bruce Rauner out of Illinois. And we're gonna make sure that we're electing Democrats from the top of the ticket all the way down because we know that we are on the right side of history. So thank you everyone for being here. I look forward to those numbers of calls skyrocketing by the end of the day and over the weekend because of the efforts that you've made. So thank you, I will talk to you soon. I hope to see you soon and everybody stay safe and healthy. Bye-bye.